On Capitol Hill today, Republicans' impeachment inquiry into President Biden played out more like a soap opera than a formal government hearing, with both Democrats and Republicans taking jabs at each other on the floor. State your parliamentary inquiry, because we've got a very important hearing here, and we don't have time for stunts. What's your parliamentary it, inquiry? It's Mr. not a stunt. Over? It's um, I'm, I'm simply asking that Mr. Bob... You don't have a parliamentary inquiry. Chair now recognizes Mr. Parnas for Mr. equal Chairman, time. Does the committee Mr. Have Mr. Chairman, session can... Chair recognizes Mr. Mr. Parnas. Does the, chairman, does the committee have the text messages that Mr. Bob... Mr. Mr. Chairman, we don't have time for games uh, by listen. Democrats today. So far in this hearing, it has felt like the worst episode of The Apprentice. I'm sure you're familiar with that show. Yikes. Two former business associates of Hunter Biden were in the hot seat today answering questions about the Biden business dealings of Hunter and the president's brother, James. A third witness actually appeared from prison where he's serving time for fraud. Republicans are looking for evidence that the president somehow profited from his son's financial activities. So far, they haven't found anything. Democrats in the White House say this is all politically motivated. News Nation's Joe Khalil is live on Capitol Hill. Joe, are Republicans closer to finding anything resembling proof? No, I don't think so, Elizabeth. It seemed like the same hearing that we have been watching over and over for the last 15 months play out again today. Obviously, there were a lot of, we'll call them, theatrics. There was an empty chair where Hunter Biden was supposed to be today. Uh, Republicans signaled to the committee that he didn't show up. And then you had someone literally testifying from inside of a prison, which I believe is a first on, on video conference. So there was a lot there. It did get wild at certain points. And the important context here is this. Republicans are genuinely struggling to make this case that Joe Biden has done anything that's impeachable. Whatever momentum they had at all uh, seriously has been stunted. And if you talk privately to many Republicans in this building, uh, many will concede that some have done so publicly now that they don't think the committee's shown anything that sort of rises to that level. We chatted with Congresswoman Nancy Mace. She's someone who has maintained that Joe Biden has committed impeachable offenses. So we pressed her, you know, specifically not on what Hunter Biden has done, but how it filters to Joe Biden and whether he is culpable. And here's that exchange. When you talk about bribery, when you talk about influence peddling, again, doesn't there need to be something on the other side? Bribery, like, what are you getting for your money? Right? Bri well, bribery includes uh, family members. But what I showed today is that Joe Biden would be on phone calls and take business meetings, and then money would come in days later. This happens over and over and over again. It's too bad that Hunter Biden wasn't there today, because we'd be able to connect the dots with all the money he made. So I was looking for a policy that Vice President Biden or President Biden made that, you know, would have been the receiving end of, of money. Republicans haven't articulated that yet. And on the other side, Democrats, many of them have sort of laughed off this investigation. But today, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez told us it's not laughing matter anymore. She says she's concerned about how often the evidence that Republicans have been using is faulty or flawed. And she says that could be legally and ethically Questionable. Here's what she yeah. told us. It is extremely disturbing. We've seen a pattern of the committee working with falsified evidence. It's one thing if you use one piece of evidence that ends up not working out and then maybe trying to apologize for it. It's another when it's a repeated pattern and there seems to be no correction in behavior. I feel like the Republicans are acting solely at the direction of Donald Trump because he wants their help in this upcoming election. Just like he wanted President Zelensky's help in the 2020 election. So obviously a lot of political interests here, uh, Elizabeth, and we're seeing that play out, too. Yeah, we've heard, uh, you know, getting back to what Nancy Mace was saying, she talks about these phone calls, but everybody who heard the phone call says they were discussing the weather. So they, you can't even point to anything that was said in those phone calls that has anything to do about business. Um, I, also, it was interesting, uh, Democrats called a witness at, in today's hearing, Lev Parnas, a former Giuliani associate, who said they're all being played by the Russians. 
Yeah, interesting, because if you know the name Lev Parnas at all, that probably means you know it because he was an associate with Rudy Giuliani, someone very connected to Donald Trump, who was literally there in Ukraine trying to sort of find uh, reasons that, uh, you know, Joe Biden uh, was corrupt. And he today is now a Democratic witness because he sort of flipped... Uh, that on, on Trump, and he has said something to the effect of there was nothing there, and they, he says they knew there was nothing there, even as they were sort of probing for things. So it was interesting, the, you know, conversion of, of Lev Parnas, and he now a, a Democratic witness in this impeachment. Yeah, process. he didn't sort of flip. He totally flipped. He's saying now that uh, they're all being yeah. played uh, and that this is all false. So interesting. Joe Khalil, thanks for... Yeah. Witnessing the soap opera and reporting on it for us tonight. Thanks. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.